Thank you for that introduction. Uh, very good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. I am Norizan Razali. <laughs> I am from Malaysia, and I assume, I would like to assume that everybody knows where Malaysia is, and for those of us who are not very familiar, Malaysia is uh, in between Thailand and Singapore. Uh, Thailand is uh, in the north and Singapore is in the south of Malaysia. And Malaysia constitutes a peninsula, that's the area um, between Thailand and Singapore, and another part of Malaysia uh, is uh, in Borneo. Yeah? So I'm obviously from the peninsula, that's the key area. So um, uh, first of all, I'd like to thank uh, the organizer for inviting me here. Uh, truly, it's a great honor for me to be given the opportunity to share the Malaysian experience in implementing a national ICT in education project <coughs> with all of you here. And um, I especially would like to thank Nancy, Professor Nancy Law, for uh, putting in the effort to uh, have me here today. So, um, and also thank you for the uh, very nice guideline because I've been involved in this uh, project for oh, my next year, it'll be my 10th uh, year, a decade of uh, being involved in this project. And um, so um, but with the guideline, it really helps me. Otherwise, you know, uh, it's very difficult to actually focus with the vast knowledge that we have from um, implementing this uh, over uh, a decade. So. Um, uh, very brief background, I am with the Multimedia Development Corporation. Uh, it is a corporation that's fully owned by the government, 100% financed, uh, and we have been established to implement a, a mega ICT project called the Multimedia Super Corridor, or MSC Malaysia. That was uh, uh, launched in 1997. Yeah, and the Smart School project, which I'll be talking about, uh, was began its implementation in 1999. So I only joined in 2001. I joined the Multimedia Development Corporation in 2001, where a lot of the concept uh, has been already uh, been in place. So I come in actually to uh, manage the project from the MDEC uh, organization perspective. And we work very closely with the Ministry of Education since the project involves schools. So actually we co-run, co-implement the project. Of course, uh, the operations are a lot handled by the Ministry of Education. Uh, we at MDEC, my role um, as heading this project at MDEC, we are often referred to as the uh, transformation <coughs> strategies in recent years, although at the beginning we were uh, called uh, the advisor, coordinator, facilitator, but in recent years I've been saddled with the role of a transformation strategy. So really signaling the urgency that we need to transform our school. So um, conceptual consideration, why do we need to introduce a smart school project? in 1999 when it began implementation, although computer in education in Malaysia has started way in the 70s as I think in most countries. So it's because uh, MSC Malaysia, we uh, introduced MSC Malaysia because the government, although Malaysia is uh, very rich in natural resources, the government doesn't believe that it will sustain us economically for uh, 2020 where we want to become a, a developed and fully modern country so we want to move to the knowledge-based economy where knowledge will be the main commodity. So smart school is one of the projects that's envisioned to build the nation human capital to help bring the nation into that knowledge-based economy. So it has economic, social, as well as global uh, reasons for uh, the smart school project together with other huge projects, smart card, e-government and telehealth. So it's very, very focused project on this sector, all these four sectors, but I'm responsible for smart school, which I'll be talking about here today. So in 1997, ladies and gentlemen, way before I joined, <laughs> they have introduced these objectives, which you can find in the smart school blueprint, very safe, very broad, nothing specific as you can see 
about the outcomes of the investment in ICT. So, uh, so over the years, there has been a lot of evolution, uh, which I will talk about the specific uh, objectives that have, in recent years, been introduced. Very, very different, or rather very specific in comparison to these very broad objectives that were introduced in 1997. So uh, let's talk about the models and processes uh, of this journey. I'd like to call it a journey. Yeah, we're still, uh, uh, you know, uh, in the journey. So we have got the implementation phases, and I must admit, honestly, that the roadmap in which these waves have been introduced were only uh, was only established in 2005, uh, after four years, or, or rather five years, of the implementation. So I was responsible for these waves after having looked at the implementation in 88 uh, schools as a pilot in 1999 and up to 2002. 88 schools were piloted and a lot of challenges uh, during that time because the 88 schools were elite schools so they were high performing schools to begin with so there was a lot of resistance of, uh, for them because they wanted to uh, ensure that they maintain their high performance and that they think ICT will come in the way. So there was really a very, it was very difficult to see the impact of ICT in education from these 88 uh, pilot schools. So uh, we did a, a lot of study and a lot of reflection. So um, as you notice, way up to the end of wave two, at the end of 2005, there was really uh, nothing done at that time because we were really looking at how do we move forward and ensure that more schools adopt this smart school concept because we were having great difficulties with the 88 smart schools. They were really resisting. So, but anyhow, in wave two, the Malaysian government went into this massive computerization stage where all 10,000 schools uh, were equipped uh, with uh, computer labs, uh, web TV, and also a connected, um, so it's called the SchoolNet project. So massive computerization stage during wave two. So, um, but then in wave three, uh, MDEC, that's uh, the short acronym for the Multimedia Development Corporation, my organization was given a bigger mandate, that is to revive the 88 smart schools so that these schools can serve as models for other schools to move on with the concept. So I came on board um, uh, and take up this, uh, this ma huge mandate to revive the 88 smart schools. So um, to do that, we had to introduce what we call smart school qualification standards or SSQS, which are actually indicators to guide our school schools on how actually to implement school-based strategies for ICT in education. These are actually best practices. We have um, created these from best practices. So we rate them from five, four, three, two star and one star. So um, three star is the average and, and five star is advanced plus, meaning uh, schools are using ICT for meaningful teaching and learning activities uh, like collaboration, uh, involvement, inclusivity with communities and uh, a lot of uh, independent learning uh, for example, and four stars is just uh, advanced, uh, slightly below five star, and three is just mere adoption. It's just, you know, just turning on that uh, content and just um, uh, basically applying all uh, methods by using ICT. That's basically three star. So that's in a nutshell.